Hello. Hello, so my name is Rhoda Aglago. Welcome to Love, Forgive, Live podcast. My goodness, today I was checking my calendar and I recognized that, or I realized that today is episode 29. I'm like, wait a minute, what happened to time? Time just flew by. I hope everybody had a great week. And you're about to start a new week, Monday. One thing I want to talk about today is, uh, I think it's important. I hope my audience will think it's important. There's something I, I do feel very strongly about. That once you recognize which thoughts are governing your everyday life or your time, you'll be much more able to have a handle on your thought process, your emotions, and how you react to things. This, I think, is very important in terms of organizing what is important to you in terms of your belief system, your goals, or where you're going, because that's what I think once we know which thought is present, we can better manage what is happening to us and make sense of it. What I am talking about is a negative thought process and positive thought process. No matter what it is that we are doing, we always have a choice. That's the best thing about, I think, being human. We always have a choice. I know a lot of times when things are happening, we think we don't have a choice. We always have a choice. The only time that we don't, it seems like we don't have a choice is when we become the subject of being victimized or we become the victim. We don't choose how lessons come to us or how things happen to us. However, we have a choice in deciding to stay a victim or not. I believe that's where you get your power from. Once you make the decision to not stay with the label of victim, that's the person who did it to you or the less person who brought you the lesson, it becomes clear. And there are thought process that comes with that. Anyways, first of all, this is the email address. Those of you who want to write to me, ask questions, or get a clarity on something, or if this helped you at all, or if it didn't, let me know. The email address is love, L-U-V-E, the number four, give, G-I-V-E, live, L-I-V-E, at G gmail.com so love forgive live at gmail.com once again my name is Sroda Aglago my aim for doing this is to encourage empower and of course motivate my brothers and sisters that is everybody I don't have uh, situations where I'm like oh I'm only for teenagers or I'm only for the 20 and over, I'm not only for the 30 and over, I'm not only for the 70 and over. Because the work I do as a mental health professional, I'm a therapist, counselor, and a life coach. I do that. Uh, that's my day job. Now I do it for an agency. 
However, on my own, I do a lot of life coaching for people. So I tend to gravitate towards encouraging and empowering people every time I come near a client or a friend or family members. So to me, this is very passionate for me and it's something that I'm very excited about. I'm, I love knowing that someone can get an information and then run with it and empower themselves and become better than the person they they thought they were and live the best life they can imagine. So I get very excited and I get moved by watching friends and family and clients discover the truth or their truth and open up and they re- realize that they have so much more greatness within them. That's why I do this. I enjoy that. I, I mean, I can't say enough about it. I could go on forever. I get so excited. People say I light up when I see how well a client is doing or a friend is doing. So that's my goal for doing this. Just want to encourage and share love. One thing, too, I wanted everybody to know, and this is very important to me, too. I do say this with all sincerity because I believe this. There's no doubt in me. No matter who you are, understand this. You are a love thought. Yes, I said that. A love thought from the creator, the creator of the entire universe. From the beginning to the end, the source, all, God. You are a love thought from him. And you you are really very special, extremely special to the creator. Okay? And no matter what you believe of yourself or what you've been told, you're more precious. I'm serious. You're more precious than all the metals and all the resources, natural resources in the world and all the precious nutrients, anything you can think about, natural stuff, everything on the planet. You're more valuable to the creator than everything. The depth of how you are loved is deeper than the deepest ocean. Is is higher than any mountain you can think of. That's how precious you are. And this thought of being less than, I think is a, an illusion. Because you're great. You are loved. You matter. And you're very important in the process, in the grand plan for the universe. You may seem like your contribution is very insignificant, but no, you are significant. Every contribution you make matters. That's why if you take yourself seriously and recognize that you are part of the greater plan, You start feeling a sense of pride that it may seem like a minuscule thing to the neighbor, but to the creator, you are doing a great thing. It could be speaking. It could be just helping someone cross the street. It could be just getting up and clapping for someone when the person does a good thing. It could be seeing a friend or a stranger being sad and you hug them or encourage them. Every little bit counts. And you came here, I've talked about your purpose before, but I'm going to speak about this. You came here with that code of a grand plan within you to share. But the greatest loss to that plan is when you don't realize it and you don't act on that plan. 
And the worst part is when people leave here without recognizing their plan within them or working towards it. I think the goal is to work as hard as we can to allow that great plan within us to be manifested into the world, to share and encourage one another that we all mattered in a great tapestry of the story. It matters. I think we came here to planet Earth with this great sense of love, adoration, and respect within us already. But when we got here, we started feeling pain, hurt, trauma, and people coming against us. And when we go through that, especially with childhood, childhood trauma and disappointments and hurts, we begin to start telling ourselves we are not important, we don't matter, we are not loved, we are not worthy to be loved, and we get lost. And when we get lost like that, we start creating this negative self, self-talk. And that negative self-talk is what I'm going to focus on, that negative self-talk, what it does to you, and what it steals from you, and what it deprives you of, Okay. Then I will speak a little bit about the positive thought process or the good thought process, okay? Because when every time you're having a negative thought process, understand that the positive is also available, but it's the one that you put your focus on. It's the one that you see as the primary thought. You know, because if you learn what the negative thoughts look like and you understand it and you understand what it does to you, I promise you, you begin to want to learn more and more about the positive thought process. Here's the thing. Negative thought process harms you. Okay. Okay. It harms everything around you and begins to fester and destroy it. And once you hold that negative thought process and focus on it, you will have more of that. I promise you, it's almost like you have one negative thought process. If you're not able to change it you know, quickly, here's what I sometimes suggest. When a thing's situation gets bad, what I sometimes tell myself is that, okay, it hurt. I don't like it. I don't, I really don't like it. But the other thing that I also tell myself is this. Can I do something about it? If I can do something about it, then I will try and do something about it. If I can't do something about it, then I will let it go because I can't do anything about it. It is what it is. And that's how you begin to recognize how you switch from the negative thought process to the positive. But if you don't let that go quickly, okay, I try not to sleep on it. I try to make sense of it. Either I write it and get rid of it from my head so it doesn't sit there and harm me or hurt me. And I don't ruminate on it. Or I speak about it with someone and say, whether the person who did the situation that caused me to think that way, I reach out to the person and I'm saying, hey, what this happened? I didn't like it. What happened? How can we make sure this doesn't happen again? Is there a way that we can prevent this? So you communicate and process the situation and let it go. But if you're not able to do that, here's what I would suggest you do or what happens if you don't do that. You begin to find evidence to make that true for you. 
A word from our sponsors. Okay, we're back. If we are not able to change from the negative to the positive thought processing, you will begin to look for more evidence to support the negative thought that you're holding on to or ruminating on or spending your time and energy on. And when this happens, the strange thing is you will find evidence. You will find more proof to tell you that what you're thinking and believing is true. That's the danger, which is sometimes when I think about it, I'm amazed how powerful that can be. So that can fester into how you relate to others. You begin to talk rudely to people. You don't look at yourself the way you normally do. It could even affect the way you dress or or believe about yourself. I recognize sometimes when I'm not feeling the greatest or not focusing on, you know, what I have or what is working for me, positive processing. And sometimes people even call it um, equity assessment or there's so many different words you can use to it, to describe it. But one of the things that I look at is this, if I'm not able to do that, change the thought process, I get worried sometimes. And it's when I, that happened, I'm like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to stay. But I've had that in the past. Now I think I'm a lot better at dealing with situations like this. But when that happens, I recognize that I dress differently. And then I, I just throw the clothes on. I really don't put a lot of thought process in. And then throughout the day, I just feel more grumpy. So it's important to recognize how that happens. And then, of course, you can hear people around you, somebody could be smiling and you're not exactly in the mood to smile and their smile will make you get mad. I've heard people tell me that. They said, oh my gosh, could you believe my friend or my coworker was mad at me because I walked in smiling, being chipper and they were just mad because I was being so cheerful. So negative thought process can drag you down. How would you recognize it, right? How would you recognize Okay, the thought that I'm having now, right now is a negative thought process. Well, here's the thing. It doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't look for joy. It has no peace attached to it. There's no sense of rest with it, except there's worry, anxiousness. Sometimes it be accompanied with anger or, or helplessness. And the thought is really not producing anything, but rather a bad feeling. Sometimes it could even result with you crying. And people might ask, what's going on with you? Why are you crying? And you tell them you don't know. And that happens. I've seen that happen. So those are the thoughts, the negative thoughts. This is what it does. Because the more you spend time on it, you're going to get more of that. And it's going to create that thought process faster and longer. It doesn't help you. It doesn't serve you in any way. On the flip side with positive thought process, okay, is the thought that energizes you, makes you move, makes you want to do something positive, something good. It makes you feel like everything is possible. You're not sitting around thinking things are impossible, but rather it's possible and you start to look for solutions. That's how you know the thought that you're having is a positive thought. The reason why it's important to recognize this is this. When you spend more time on negative thought, it can even make you sick. You know, it can create things that you don't want. So my question is, what is it that you want? If you want what is supposed to make you feel good, 
then seek positive thought process of positive things and things that makes you feel alive, happy. Not things that makes you feel like you're being beaten down and being told you're nothing. That's how you recognize that's negative process, thought processing. A negative thought processing will drag you, like literally drag you down. So you want the thoughts that will encourage you, empower you, that will make you feel like you're doing something good. Okay? Now, the other thing I wanted to speak about is this. And this is important too. Like I said about we all have choices. There's always two choices in every situation. No matter what, there's always two choices. Okay? This is what I will ask. You decide. You can choose to be a hostage to the ego. Or you can choose to be a host to the mind of God. Your choice. A hostage to the ego... You're never free. Your thoughts are never free. You're constantly on edge. And you can't seem to find any peace or relief. But when you become a host to the mind of God, wow. Things actually do work out for you. They may not work out the way you want them to be, but they do work out one way or the other. And even if they don't, you're rested assured that it'll work out eventually. Because you look to your past and you find the times that you thought things would not work out, they have worked out. So why would any time, why would this particular time be any different? That's the question you need to ask yourself. And I'll share this too. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Therein lies the peace of God. Let me repeat that. This one took, I remember the first time I read that years ago. It took me repeating this thought to myself over and over and over for at least five days. And then a few times in a couple of weeks, then it finally sunk in. I had an aha moment like, oh my goodness, I get it now. I was like, what does that mean? So let me repeat what I just said. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Therein lies the peace of God. That takes a while in sinking into but it makes a lot of sense. It gives you a chance to recognize truth can never be destroyed. And if you know it from what is possible at all costs, you need not waste time on what doesn't help you on what doesn't give you a chance to become the best you that you can be. Recognize which thoughts you're spending time and energy on. And then look to yourself. Look around you and what you're doing. Are you going to bed with complete peace of mind and trust that it is well? Because nothing unreal cannot do any cannot harm you. Or are you going to bed anxious and worried? Now you know which thought process you're spending time on. And do you want that? Is that what you want? Is that what you need? And is that what you want to spend your time and energy on? That's the questions you need to ask yourself. Because if things are not going the way you want it, you're, you can always change it. 
If nothing is doing what you need, why would you hold on to it? Why would you choose to live in misery? Why would you choose to allow the negative process to destroy you? Why not see what would empower you and make you grow into the being that you're supposed to be? To become more and more and more familiar with positive thought process. Good thought process. Thoughts that energize you. Thoughts that helps you grow. Thoughts. That gives you a chance after chance for possible wins, not losses. Wins. Because the wins allow you to recognize what matters the most. Okay? So... Every time things don't look the way they look and they begin to disturb you, stop for a second and ask yourself. I do this sometimes. If like uh, I'm in a negative thought process, I don't do this all the time, but sometimes when I start getting there, I stop and I was like, okay, which thought is this? And I recognized and I said, is that from the mind of God or from the ego? Because if you don't believe me, take a pen and paper or a book and write the thoughts, the negative thoughts that you entertain or that your mind goes to all the time. You rush to it. And it's so easy. The be- The strange thing is not the best, but the strange thing is this. It's extremely easy for people to come up with negative thought process. It comes quickly. And a lot of it. But when you tell people to start focusing on positive thought process, sometimes it takes them a while to recognize or to even come up with a good list of positive thoughts. I remember once I was speaking to a friend of mine and I asked her what she wanted and she said, well, I don't know, but I don't want to have to get up in the morning and have to clean all the time. I was like, okay. The question I asked was, what do you want? And she repeated the same thing again. I don't want to have, and I was like, do you realize what just keeps happening? The first response is to escape into negative thought. This was so funny. The question I asked was, what do you want? The answer couldn't come from there. It came from a backhand of a negative thought. I don't want to do this. Remember the question that they asked? Do you want to do this? Or what do you want to do? We asked, what do you want? And it became, I don't want A, B, C, and D. Meanwhile, the answer could have been simple. I want A, B, C, and D. But we immediately go to, I don't want. And sometimes I I even do that. And then I catch myself and I was like, oh, I didn't just go there, did I? I'm like, "Mm, ego, you sure know how to sneak in. The goal of all this is for you to recognize that the negative thought is of the ego. It's not of the mind of God. Once you recognize that, it helps you begin to beat the ego at its own game. Because ego cannot win. When you start to question ego with truth, it doesn't work. 
at all. So it's important to recognize how best to deflect from the ego and move your thinking from it. Now, it doesn't mean ego goes away. I promise you it will not go away at all. Because picture in a garden, okay? You're like planting your favorite flowers. And you have all these bugs that come to feast on them. You can spray all kinds of things on it to keep them away. But there will always be another one that is chewing the flowers. Or making it impossible for the flower to keep growing without being eaten. You can spray all kinds of things in it, but there will always be one or two things that will not go away, or bugs or whatever they may be, that will go at it. But you can also choose not to focus on the bugs so much, because they also have to live. Think about it. They also have to live, so it is what it is. But you can choose to focus on the fact that your flowers are growing beautifully and they look healthy. It's just a couple of them have been eaten, but the rest of them just look good. So you can choose to focus on which one is working because that's what will make you feel good. That's what will make you spend less energy lamenting and worrying. Or say, oh, I wish, you know, this thing could grow. This is this is not growing the way I want it. I just, you know, the thing I always hear is, oh, I'm in my, uh, uh, I don't have a, a growth thumb. Thumb for plants. Plants will say, oh, no, 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 everything I try to plant, they die. Well, here's the thing. If you're going to wait for you to become some expert on how to grow plants, you may never grow it. So might as well do it. And I understand that the bugs that will come and eat, there will always be a bug coming and eat it. You're always going to have to deal with one or two of them. They're not going away. But you begin to focus on the things that are working, the plants that are growing and becoming more and more beautiful. And you admire it. You become happier just looking at them and you smile. It's doing its job regardless. But that doesn't mean there were no bugs. That's what I'm saying. So no matter what it is, negative thought process will be there in the background, at the back of the head, or somebody will say it. But it is up to you to focus on what you have and where you're going and what is working for you. Those are the choices. So once you recognize which one is ego and which one is not, Half the battle is done in choosing positive thoughts, in choosing positive outlook. Nothing else. It becomes a great thing for you to do. Okay? So, it's very important to recognize ego-driven, which is a hostage, or the mind of God. A host to the mind of God. Always, always, these are the questions you should be asked. Which one is this? Remember, a host of God will show you things that make you smile, things that make you feel valued. Because you are. You know, so. Once you become abreast or familiar with ego-driven thought process and the mind of God thought process, you begin to start feeling a shift in your daily life because you start feeling a lot more peaceful and relaxed. That doesn't mean everything is going always going to be kumbaya and you're going to be 
happy all the time. But you're going to be happy knowing that it is what it is and I don't have to react because happiness is also a choice. I've discussed that before in the past few episodes, so I won't go too much into that. But it's important to focus on ego. Learn what ego is and decide not to follow it and understand what the mind of God is. That's what will give you the joy you seek and then return to the thought process that you are a love thought from the creator in spite of what anybody could say in spite of what anyone could show you you are truly a love thought and it's beautiful you begin to stand a little taller knowing You know, so as a love thought, rejoice in the fact that everything will be taken care of. But it's up to you to choose. Choose. The hurt cannot stay forever. It changes. It changes. And you begin to live. You begin to have the life you dream of. That is important. Okay? Because the goal is for you to have joy and peace. And once you have that, life gets exciting. Nothing can knock you off. Things may not go right, but you'll be like, huh, okay, maybe I wasn't supposed to have that project anyways. You know? Or you might think, oh, well, maybe if I was doing it and I don't know what I was, I'll be doing, it might get me in trouble. So might as well just stay out of it and let things take its own course. Okay? And sometimes you feel, oh, no, 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 things need to be this way. And then we get bogged down with wanting things to show up the way we want it. <laughs> That never works. It never works. It becomes a disaster. And sometimes people get disappointed and hurt. And here's why I hear another negative thought come up. Nothing good ever happens to me. It happens to other people, but never happens to me. Wow. I always say, I promise you, nobody's sitting down writing, taking account and say, Oh, yeah, something bad just happened. Something good just happened. And that people are behind. Goodness is wonderful. Sometimes it helps people become more focused on positive thoughts. You know, and you also recognize people with positive thoughts. They always walk in the room smiling already. They haven't seen anybody yet. But the moment they step in the room, they are smiling, hands up, saying hello, sometimes wanting to high five people. That's how excited positive thought is. It's infectious. It's something that people see and they're like, oh, this is beautiful. I want to be a part of that. You know. So it's important once we recognize it, we can choose good things, our positive thoughts, and get more of that by creating what makes the positive thoughts so functional. You know, do that, and then you start having a better chance of relaxing and finding peace and joy and knowing that nothing real can threat can be threatened nothing unreal exists therein lies the peace of god that is what you can take daily 
or even at night sometimes depending on what people are doing these days okay so a recap is this no matter what you're loved that love you don't have to do anything to earn it it is what it is you know so another thing I want everyone to know is this negative thoughts are energy draining it never helps you it never ever helps at the time you might think oh yeah I've gotten I'm feeling bad now I have company to commiserate with no it doesn't happen it's better to choose sometimes I even tell people to count some one time I made someone count to seven and then I asked them, well, what's the negative thought? They're like, what negative thought? And I was like, oh, snap. You counted to seven and then <laughs> it switched. Some people do a counting system and then it'll switch for them. Then they start feeling more focused. But you also have to understand that this is another thing. When you spend your time being grateful, writing down things that makes you feel good, That's it. When you become that aware, it feels good. So, I believe I said some time ago that write down five things you're grateful for. Either every morning or every evening before you, or every night before you go to bed. Do that for 30 days and realize what happens. It's incredible. Three day things you're grateful for or thankful for. Or f- five. Ideally, I say five, but if people say, no, I'm having a hard time finding five, then do three. Because in a space of writing down or in a space of appreciating, being grateful, or having a gratitude journal, that alone can deter you from focusing on negative thoughts. Okay? We've come to the end of this episode. Thank you for joining me. I hope to speak to everybody again. I will. Next week. And uh, those who sometimes use Facebook, this coming Tuesday, I will be doing a a short 15 or 10 minutes Facebook live stream on a topic that I find very interesting. Learning to let go. And learning to forgive. That's what I'll talk about on a Facebook live stream on Tuesday at 7.30 Eastern Time. Okay? My name is Shroda Aglago. Thank you for joining me on Love, Forgive, Live podcast. I hope everybody have an amazing week. And please do have a good productive week and I will talk to everybody next week thank you God bless you and have a great great week enjoy every moment of being positive grateful five gratefulness each day bye